Transition Awareness Breathing. Feeling grounded for both children and parents is essential for healthy living and learning. Join Eartha Powell on this series for tips and tools for creating a harmonious environment for learning. Transition Awareness Breathing will help you and your child find an individualized path to tackle change, promote lifelong learning, and discover new approaches to calmness. Oh, thank you so much for coming back. Thank you for joining me in Transition Awareness Breathing Podcast. Welcome back. Make yourself comfortable. And here's a question for you. Why does it take life-changing events to sometimes change our behavior. And when I am referring to life-changing events, if you're not familiar with that phrase or terminology, it means events that has occurred that may have been life-threatening or the event made such an impact on one's life or lifestyle, um, it really gets down to life or death or a threat of um, a person's health or their um, sense of what is really important, family, uh, relationships may have been threatened. So life-changing events is something that occurs. And then after the occurrence, there is a maybe I can use this word like a rehabilitation or a period of time where one is coming back, coming back from the storm and it changes a person's perspective totally. And, and so back to my question that I had the first time, I wonder why does it take such an event to cause us to become aware of our behavior and it moves us from a state of ambivalence into a state of movement. It causes us to transition to a new level of life. Thank you so much again for joining me. And before we go any farther, thank you, Web Talk Radio, for allowing me to have a platform to bring Transition Awareness Breathing Podcast to my listeners. And thank you, Mary Lou and Sam, for making Transition Awareness Breathing Podcast available to my listeners everywhere they go. Now, let's get back to this, this why question. Uh, You know, I'm sure there are many answers, philosophies, theories. I'd like to get a little personal, not too personal, (laughs) but to share an experience Um, to make this very real. And I, I have to tell you, I have, I kind of question whether I should even uh, do a podcast on this topic. Um, So I figured, well, it's, it's part of this process and I wanted to share it with you. So here I go. And if if it's not for you, you know, 
Thank you for joining me, and uh, I invite you to be open. Truly, our time together, I hope, will exercise the mindfulness practice of acceptance and being non judgmental. And that is our goal for today acceptance and non judgmental. Meaning, we don't have to agree with what is being said, and uh, we don't even have to relate or understand uh, to the, the, the basic principles of what we're about to, to talk about. Being non-judgmental means to, if I can use an analogy, to pick up a, a bottle and look at the bottle and um, not judge the bottle of its beauty or its character, uh, but just to acknowledge the bottle as a vessel. Not a good vessel, not a bad vessel. It's just a vessel. And start there. When we are in the practice of mindfulness meditation and relaxation breathing, it is, uh, it takes a lot of practice to bring, bring oneself to a point where you are really um, thinking and doing a scan of the reaction of our body, our breath. And along with that, when we practice different um, mindfulness meditations, to allow the the mind to really concentrate and focus on an area that we want to release. And when that release occurs in the mind, it it opens our mind for um for learning, for acceptance for loving, for kindness, for compassion. On the other hand, when we are so busy in our everyday, everyday life, there's, uh, you know, we describe it as, we describe it as stress. It's, it's tight, it's constricted, it's, it's guarding a, a type of um, uh, approach that even when we are uh, trying to practice our mindfulness um, meditation and relaxation breathing, that tightness, that guarding, it it's still there. And with practice and learning and uh, even practicing with a mentor or taking a class, it helps us to grow. And so I say that to reinforce um, if you're practicing mindfulness and it doesn't seem like it's working, it means that you're practicing. And so continue continue to practice. You are reaching new levels all the time. 
when, if a person has undergone a unfortunate event and it causes what we call that life changing uh, circumstances to cause a to cause a life change, you know, it takes the mind and the body, whatever, you know, it depends on whatever the situation is, but certainly it takes the mind and the body into a state of maybe total, being totally drained, almost a despair or a emptiness. It's a feeling of of where do I go from here? And from there, um, the perspective of what is important really becomes apparent. It really begins to highlight. Many may say at those points of time, they find out who their friends are or they find out what's really important. And it would be so wonderful if we didn't have to reach that state to find out what's really important, I think. Um, But life is life. And let us learn from from our experiences and share our experiences to help others. There is an inner strength, I think, um, that is shown when a person is coming back from such a life-changing event. A strength that even that person didn't know they had. Certainly, uh, staying in one's comfort zone, I'm not sure if that is the answer, since a lot of times life-changing events occur and it throws us outside of our comfort zone. Some may have a time of prayer or um, a time of quietness to uh, connect with a higher power, knowing that there is some some power higher than oneself that is comforting to be able to reach out spiritually for um, a guidance. And uh, on that that same note, I I became more aware of a particular word in the book of Psalms. Uh, The Psalms is a book and it has a lot of uh, prayer by King David, Moses, uh, who are the authors, and there's many more, but the that's not what I really want to bring out. What I really wanted to share is that there's a word that is used in the book of Psalms occasionally, and it's selah. And so what does selah means? Well, you know, off in the dictionary, you, you'll find that it's, it's sometimes it's difficult to translate or sometimes it's, it's said it's a a musical pause, or it's a time of quiet. And um, it got me thinking, you know, this mindfulness uh, uh, journey here really is really great because I, I have some experience in singing and a little bit of experience with music. And so you know if you're learning music and or you're singing and there's a pause okay you you pause you, you pause for a certain time a certain beat and it does it adds to the music the 
the silence and the pause. And I think that's one message. But I think this word, Selah, has another message. And I, as, you know, as one reads the the Psalms and that prayer, when it says Selah, that pause, I think, is a guide or a vessel. Not only are you pausing, but you're going back to the previous statement or sentence and mindfully taking in that statement what it means and bringing the meaning of that statement in into a reality into an awareness does that make sense i mean it seems like it was clear in my mind and then when i talk about it it's like what but let me try a little bit more so when we pause i'm if i'm singing i'm singing a note or if i'm saying poetry this is another example poetry there there are purposeful pauses and it adds to the poetry or it adds to the music the pause but if when i come across a word and it says cela and it's maybe a a the word cela is like a code for me to go back to what i just read and to take that phrase in and breathe on it and take it into my spirit, there is a pause, but there is a definite mindful um, action that's going on. And it is amazing. And uh, so I practiced that Selah just in a few uh, moments of meditation and it was amazing. Um, One might think, well, that was your mantra. Well, I'm not repeating anything. Maybe it could be a mantra, but it's a, it's, it's more than a pause. It's a, it's a vessel to in a message to go back and to take in the thought and to capture it in the mind. Going back to the life changing event, if you've encountered anyone who has experienced a life changing event, you might find that even their demeanor, the way they're they have an outlook on life is different. It's it's a pause. It's meaningful. It's it's a selah. And what got them there at that point was that event, that life changing event that got them to the point of seeing things from such a higher level, mental, mindful, spiritual, the, the, the essence of, of one's existence has changed. And so their outlook becomes different. And, and what is really important is really obvious. As I invite you to take a breath in and blow it out and let the breath be your anchor and then recognize and acknowledge being aware that this new moment is a a life changing event that where we're at right now is different and 
maybe this has not been a life-changing event. It has been a time to pause, a time to reflect. Thank you again for joining me in Transition Awareness Breathing Podcast. I look forward to talking to you again next time. Have a great day. Be sure and pick up a copy of Eartha's new book, Tab Mindfulness, Awareness and Coloring Activities in a Pandemic World. It's not just an ordinary coloring book. It features 23 illustrations to stimulate thought, relaxation, and creativity for anyone between the ages of 4 and 94. Increase your positive self-talk energy. Unlock new creative paths. Transform your time once or twice a week to create beautiful art while strengthening confidence, building positive self-talk, and sensitize self-awareness. Tab Mindfulness, awareness and coloring activities in a pandemic world. It's available now at Amazon.com.